healthy. From this part, we are moving to the second section of this course. We'll focus on understanding the electron diffraction inside TEM. So in this video specifically, we'll talk about why we even bother doing diffraction inside TEM, the types of electron diffractions in TEM, and also how does electron scatter from a crystal. Let's start by looking at why doing diffraction inside TEM. One main advantage of doing diffraction inside TEM is because we are able to relate what we see in the micrographs to the crystallography. In the example shown in the slide here, my student De Xing, he took a micrograph of the deformed AZ31 magnesium alloy. You see some dark lines, those are dislocations. On the right, that's the corresponding diffraction pattern of the micrograph. Using the diffraction pattern, we can answer many questions. For example, whether the specimen is crystalline or amorphous. In this case, we know it's not amorphous, because if it was amorphous, then we should have seen a diffusive ring instead of sharp spots. From the diffraction pattern, we can also tell the orientation of the crystal. In this case specifically, we know that the crystal is tilted to the 2, 1 bar, 1 bar, 0 orientation. We can also obtain the uh, specimen's crystallographic characteristics such as lattice parameter and the symmetry. For lattice parameter, because the interspacing of those spots reflect the spacing or interplanar spacing of the crystal, so we can work out the uh, lattice parameter of the specimen. Uh, also by looking at the shape of the diffraction pattern, it's rectangular, so that tells us it has a two-fold symmetry in this orientation. There are a lot more information you can uncover from electron beam diffraction, which we will discuss in details in the future videos. In fact, the rule of thumb is that whenever you take a picture or take a micrograph using TEM, you should always take a diffraction pattern. When acquiring electron diffraction patterns, depending on how converged the beam is, you can either take the parallel electron beam diffraction or the convergent electron beam diffraction. From the examples shown here, you can see a typical example of the parallel electron beam diffraction on the left. So what you see are sharp spots. If you converge the electron beam when acquiring the electron diffraction pattern, you will get disks. This is called the convergent electron beam diffraction or seabed. I apologize for the typo here. So the seabed should be C-E-B-D, not E-E-B-D. One interesting thing to notice is that in CBAT, you see bright field image in the transmitted disk and you see dark field images in the diffracted disks. So how does electron beam interact with the material to give rise to diffraction patterns? So we can view that uh, by looking at the wave vectors. We denote the incident electron beam Ki and diffracted beam Kd. Because the scattering event is elastic, so the magnitude of Ki is the same as Kd. And also, there's a relationship or correlation between the magnitude of the wave vector and the wavelength, which is lambda, of the electron beam. So K is equal to 1 over lambda. Let's reposition Ki and Kd and get a triangle out of it. So if we use Kd minus Ki, we can get the difference vector, which is called K. From simple trigonometry, we can work out the relationship of sine theta and the K. What we have here is the magnitude of K is 2 sine theta over lambda. If the electron beam undergoes a Bragg's diffraction condition, then we can denote theta as theta b. And also we know that for Bragg's equation, n lambda is equal to 2d sine theta. So we have sine theta in both equations here. We can combine these two equations and drop off sine theta and write kb as a function of d. What we have is kb is equal to 1 over d. d is the interplanar spacing. Uh, one thing to notice is that during the simplification, lambda also got dropped off as well. Another thing that is worth noting is that as d increases, the kb value decreases. 
So in real space, if the lattice parameter or the lattice spacing increases, then the value of KB decreases in the reciprocal space. We define the vector KB as G, and also KB is also called the G vector. You will encounter the uh, term G vector many, many times in diffraction as well as in the imaging section of this course. So what is a G vector? So intuitively, if we look at the diffraction pattern, we identify the center spot or the transmitted beam, we call that O, 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 and we have a diffracted beam here. So this is O, 1, 1 bar O. If we draw a vector from the transmitted beam to the diffracted beam, this is the G vector. Note that the G vector is perpendicular to the set of planes. In this case, it's perpendicular to the O, 1, 1 bar 0 planes. We don't have to limit ourselves to only one G, so let's identify another diffracted spot, O to 2 bar O, and draw a vector, so this is called 2G. Before finishing today's video, I'd like to talk more about electron scattering from a crystal. The first thing I'd like to discuss is the value of theta in TEM is very, very small. The reason is because when we view electron beam as a wave, the wavelength is extremely small. So n lambda is extremely small. For 2D sine theta part, the lattice spacing is constant for a material, so the theta angle has to be very small as well. What this tells us is the planes that undergo Bragg's condition are nearly parallel to the incident electron beam direction. The second thing i like to briefly mention in this slide is something we call dynamical effects. When the electron beam undergoes Bragg's diffraction, it does not have to only diffract once. In fact, if we look at the, uh, the first beam here, it can get diffracted multiple times by the same set of planes. If you follow the beam number one, you can see it's getting diffracted once, then twice by the same set of planes. So this is called the dynamical effects. In most of the analyses we'll carry out in the next few weeks, we will not worry about this. Uh, we'll mainly focus on the kinematic effects of diffraction. But you need to bear that in mind that dynamical effects can also occur. Dynamical effects became more and more prominent when we deal with thicker specimens. When we deal with diffraction pattern, we have to think in reciprocal space. So in the next video, we'll discuss this in details.